Hello everybody. Um, I guess we just had a, a little short video to do today uh, to put together some uh, some ways to code wrench kata methods. Um, yeah, I apologize for the cringy humor on the uh, on the board right here, but I'm running out of ideas. So if you have any ideas for um, similarly cringy um, but uh, reasonably <laughs> reasonably reasonable uh, sorts of math humor or jokes or whatever. Feel free to contact me. It'd be really cool to uh, have some more ideas because otherwise this board's going to be empty because I'm running out of material. Um, so uh, definitely uh, feel free to have your say. Uh, so yeah, as I said, we're going to be doing a short video on uh, coding runge kata methods and we're going to get to this uh, right now. So yeah, we talked about this in the last video, the idea of using multi-step schemes of different kinds. Um, in order to get better solution approximations to initial value problems. Um, Euler's method is very, very simple. because It's a one-step method. You use one single slope to get a new estimate, and you can repeat it lots of times. Coding that is really just running a loop again and again, and it's, it's not very complicated at all. And it turns out that um, to put together any single runge kata method, so if you have like RK4, or if you have... Um, you know, the midpoint method that we did before and so on. Um, these aren't really that much harder to code. It's just that you have multiple steps inside the loop that you have to make sure that you define well. So really all it comes down to is that if you have some working code for Euler's method, you really have any other single method for Runge Kutta, but maybe with a few extra lines of code inside that, that main loop. So here's an example of how I would go ahead and code RK4. So you want to initialize the, the problem first. So you want to define whatever the right-hand side is of the DE, um, right? We have our, our general first order DEs are what this is going to be working on. So Y prime equals some function of T and Y. We need to know what that function is or we can't do this thing. Uh, we absolutely need initial conditions of some sort. So we need to have that initial condition codified. We need some value for T zero and Y zero. And of course we need uh, a step size so that we, we know how far we have to step forward and how far each of the associated steps for the scheme are going to be. Um, we're going to need a loop uh, because it's not going to be enough. We're going to need to like repeat some steps again and again. We need that iteration to happen. And with every step of the loop, we're going to use whatever the current T and Y values are. So the initial conditions to start, that'll give us a new estimate in the future. Those will become our new current and so on. And we'll construct those four different k values that define the runge kata method, the RK4 method, one at a time. Each one subsequently, or subsequently, however you pronounce that, um, depending on the one before it. Once you've got them all, define your R. Remember that R is just that linear combination of all the different estimates. And that's going to be the amount that we add to the previous y value to get the next one. And that's how you update the values of t and y through this step and this step and you repeat as necessary. Of course, the t value is just going to be updated by the amount of the step size for the next step. So as long as you have some working Euler's method code, you can take that code and add in a couple of extra steps to construct, construct multiple k values and use all of those in combination to um, find a new estimate for the next step and so on. So what's more useful though, is because as we said, there's actually all sorts of different runge kata methods, right? That's for RK4. But what if you wanted a general sort of code that could be used for any runge kata method? That becomes a little bit tougher. What the, what the goal is here is, well, what if I'm given a butcher tableau? A butcher tableau, as you might remember from the last video, is that table that codifies the different combinations and so on that define all of the steps in a runge kata scheme, whether or not it's RK4 or something else. Now, that's different, right? That means that I want to change the method depending on what that tableau is that, that is really defining the method. And so to code that generally it takes a little bit more ingenuity and care. So, Right, that tableau is going to tell us a few things. It's going to tell us the way in which each k value is defined. It gives us how many steps are in the method, which is something that is a piece of information we're going to know. 
and that final weighting that determines how R should be constructed. So those different elements need to be there. Um, you might wonder how the heck to do this generally, but given the layout in that tableau, well, it looks a lot like it has a matrix sort of form. And we can represent it that way. We just have to know how to read that matrix. You could store the information in all kinds of ways, but here's the way that I've chosen to do it. So on the left, you can see the usual RK4 scheme as we defined it in the previous lecture. And this I've turned into a matrix. And you'll notice, right, the triangular form that's up here corresponds to this triangle in the matrix right here with the linear combination being down there. And um, everything else that's not in there is set to zero. Um, and we can pick off the information as we need from this matrix. Now, figuring out how to do that within a loop and having that loop, well, it has to depend on the size of the matrix, which tells us how many steps are in the method and so on. There are a lot of different pieces here that if you don't want to hard code them are pretty, pretty challenging. Um, so what I've done is I've actually provided some base code for you to use on the next page. Uh, I've done this a couple of times through the course, especially when it comes to some more complicated things like the, uh, the nested polynomials and how you would construct the Lagrange interpolant. The very first time that we did bisection methods, so you could get used to it. And here, I think this is tough enough that it's nice for you to instead have a piece of code that you can work with and read through and understand. But uh, if I'm giving you the code, I do want you to, to take it out for a run. You know what I mean? Like I want you to be able to sit down with it, try to implement it yourself, uh, see how you would adapt different RK methods um, by changing some parameters and so on, and become comfortable with what I've done. Okay, so um, there are some nested loops involved because essentially we're going to need to go through and calculate many steps, but then those steps might depend on multiple calculations that we have to, uh, to work with. So uh, that's to, to produce each of the K values and the R. Um, if we don't have it hard coded, we don't know how many calculations we need. So we need to loop it until we, we get to something big enough. So why don't we take a look? Why don't we take a look at the code? And um, it, we really don't have much more to do here, um, except to, to kind of go through this. This is going to be the uh, last page of this little mini lecture, just to go through how to, to uh, uh, put this together, or how I put it together, because there are lots and lots of ways. And I said the good news is that it all fits on one page. So even though it's more complicated, we can get through this. It looks like uh, about 40 lines if you take out the white space here. So we have some declarations at the, at the start, so just symbolic declarations. Nothing crazy. And if we look into the next part, we're just initializing our different scheme. There's the butcher tableau right here. I've got some comments in, in place so you can see where this is coming from. Um, I can see my function that defines the right-hand side of the differential equation right there. I've got the number of steps that are required. So that's the num RK steps right here. So all of this stuff, and there's the initial condition right there. This is all of the initialization of the problem and the scheme. And of course I have chosen an F here, but you could change the F to whatever you wanted for whatever you want to do. So I've got it so that right now it performs only two iterations of the scheme, but of course you could make this number go as far as you want to get as many iterations as you want. But of course, as with any differential equation numerical solver, um, the estimates are going to get worse and worse the more iterations you go. So you got to make sure that H is small enough. But RK4 or any runge cut method um, will tend to do better than a simple straightforward Euler's method. Okay, so you'll notice that inside of here, um, we are going to reset the K values as a first step every single time we pass through the loop. And that's so that I'm not adding to the previous steps K values. I need to construct all the different estimates, all of those different Ks in each step so I can take that weighted average at the end to get a new estimate. So I need to make sure that at the beginning, I'm like, okay, let's zero these out, start to build these again um, so we can have something clean. And so then we do that. We um, 
have to then um, figure out the different information. Everything in here is, you can see the different kinds of uh, um, uh, uh, aspects here. So the, a few different things. I have a, a Y increment that I'm, I'm creating here within some loop that tells me the right terms to be added to the current Y in each of the cases. This is building up, this is helping to build up um, the different uh, uh, K values and, and such. And then once I've got that, I can define, I can define that newest K. Um, and each one in general could depend on the ones before it. And that's why this is, this is right there. So go through and, and check that out line by line, make sure that that makes some sense. And I go through and I have to, right? Notice that the loop goes to the number of RK steps. So I have to create all of those different uh, K values, one for each step. Once I've got them all, I zero out the R and then I produce a new R for that pass of the loop. And I take a linear combination of all of those different K values. So linear combination of all K values. And let's remind ourselves that the K values are calculated in here. So this calculates each K, each K in the scheme. And the reason why I need this extra loop is that I don't know how many there have to be in general. It's going to depend on the number of steps in the problem, which is defined by how big that tableau is at the very start. Um, yeah. And then once you've got it all, this updates, these two lines update the, um, the current values of Y and T so that we ha now have a new value of Y and T and that's depend, uh, dependent on how big R is and then moving a time step forward. So this here is updating Y and T. So there's quite a bit there, but I think that if you go through it line by line and you really understand what's going on with the like hand calculations we did last time, this might not be so bad, okay? Um, so it's, but it's challenging, right? The moment that you don't wanna hard code something means that you have to take some extra pains to try and make it more general uh, more flexible for whatever your input might be. Um, but then once you have this, it's super powerful and you can use it to, to check your work. You can use it to adapt to, um, you know, midpoint method examples or other RK schemes that you might find if you're researching others and there are tons out there. So um, that's kind of a synopsis of, of everything I wanted to talk about here. And that's going to take us to the end of this section of the notes. Uh, hopefully it's been okay. We started by talking a little bit about um, the basics of differential equations. We went through some simple schemes in Euler's method and then extended it to these multi-step methods, representing them with these tableaus, and now we're even going to be coding them. So um, let me know if that makes sense. Some of it will take some patience and practice, and that's fine, um, but we're gonna change gears for the next video and start talking about something different. Um, a few little uh, interesting, useful topics that also have to do with estimates of derivatives and so on. So I, I hope you'll join me and those are going to be in the videos to come. So please um, uh, do your best, study hard, um, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.